All right, good evening, everybody. It is Monday, August 10th, 2020. I'm your host, DM Galabond, and this is Monster Monday. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the Demogorgon. Uh, now, Demogorgon, this is not Demogorgon, the proper name. This is the Demogorgon, the monster. Confused? Okay, well, we're going to try to uh, unconfuse you over the next few minutes as we talk about this monster uh, from the lore of D&D. Before we get started, as always, want to send special thanks out over to Mo over at the tabletopbellhop.com. And uh, those of you on the stream, you've been listening to the dulcet tones of Kevin McLeod, uh, as, uh, who composes a bunch of music that... All of the music you hear on pre-show comes straight out of Roll20. It's the default jukebox compositions out of there. And you can find everything that Kevin McLeod does over at Incompetech.com. All right. So, tonight's monster is the Demogorgon. Now, the Demogorgon is actually an Etten. And it is a very specific Etten that comes from the Temple of Morlock in the Infernal Machine Rebuild Adventure. Uh, this is a uh, one of those 5e adventures where they've gone back to some classic content uh, from the lore of old D&D and brought, uh, brought it ahead. Um, the right head of this Etten, because uh, Etten is, of course, a two-headed giant, uh, the right head of the creature sports a stylish beard, while the, left hand, while the left head has a large curving mustache. Uh, silver wires extend from a large pouch hanging around the giant's two necks, connecting directly into his chest. Um, this, Those wires have to do with some blood magic uh, that the Etten's mentor, um, creator, uh, not actually creator, because Etten's are naturally occurring um, monsters, uh, brainwasher, let's say, um, this, uh, <laughs> this poor Etten has been brainwashed, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that later, but he has delusions of grandeur, uh, much like the true Demogorgon, uh, the demon lord Demogorgon, uh, the Etten's two heads are constantly clash and refuse to speak directly to one another. Instead, rely, relaying message, messages through assigned stewards. So, um, this is a monster that can be truly terrifying if you have to fight it, but it is set up to be also a bit of comic relief um, in the way it is constructed. So, the lore behind the Demogorgon... Um, and it's always listed in quotes as the Demogorgon. It's an Etten that uh, resides in the Temple of Moloch in the Infernal Machine Rebuild. It's been brainwashed by the um, artificer uh, Thessalar into believing it is a statue of the actual demon lord that has been brought to life by the artificer's magic. And so it thinks that it is actually representative of the true demon lord and thus it has its delusions of grandeur uh, and uh, it's in a temple uh, to a god moloch that has been turned into this artificer's uh, you know huge sprawling expansive laboratory where he has all kinds of crazy things going on in there um, it's a real uh, it's kind of like Willy Wonka, Willy Wonka and the Monster Factory is kind of, is kind of what the Infernal Machine Rebuild or the uh, Temple of Moloch uh, is like. It's uh, that's a good way of thinking about it. Now, because it's an Etten, Ettens are giants, and if we look at the uh, creature type in D and D, properties of giants: they tower over humans and their kind. They're human-like in shape, though some have multiple heads or deformities. Uh, six varieties of true giants are hill, 
stone, frost, fire, cloud, and storm giants. And then there's also other um, other creatures that are lumped into giant kin, such as ogres and trolls. And then some of the offshoots of those, like Oni, are um, a uh, spellcasting form of ogres. And then also um, there's a playable race that has uh, giant blood, and that is the Furbolg. Uh, the Furbolg are half giants, uh, basically. So they have some giant properties as well. All right. Uh, now, terrain, a little bit different for this particular Etten. Uh, we're talking about a single member, a specific member of a species here. But if we look at Ettens in general, uh, hills, mountains, and underdark is their normal terrain. Of course, the Demogorgon uh, has been taken out of its natural habitat and dropped into the uh, Temple of Moloch. So um, you won't find it in its natural habitat. But uh, they're usually in hills or mountainous. Uh, it's unclear where the Demogorgon originated, uh, as the breaking of its mind through the brainwashing has left it with no memories of its former life. So um, it it's kind of a, a blank slate there, and that makes it kind of fun for the DM because then the DM can sort of make up whatever whatever he or she wants. Uh, you can decide that this Etten is, um, you know, one that came from a mountainous area, uh, and maybe something that the PCs do or say will trigger uh, a fragment of a memory or could be from a, f a hill or forest area or something like that, or maybe even from the Underdark. All right, uh, non-mechanical features of this monster. Uh, the Demogorgon is a great opportunity for the DM to engage in RP. Um, in, the Demogorgon engages in pointless bickering with itself between the two heads, uh, but the heads are so arrogant they can't talk to each other. Uh, each head has a steward, which is a creature called a boggle. Uh, when one of the Etten heads wants to give a message to the other one, the head summons its own steward, gives that steward the message, and the boggle runs to the other boggle, who then relays the message to the other head and takes the reply back to the first steward. So um, really, if you're a DM that has a talent for voices and you can pull off two distinct voices, you know, you might just throw in an accent for the um, boggles and use your own voice with that. But if you could have uh, two distinct voices for uh, the two heads of uh, the Demogorgon, like, you know, something like uh, Bugs Bunny for one head and... Um, you know, and Daffy Duck for the other head, or, uh, you know, Yosemite Sam for one head, and, uh, you know, maybe um, Jerry Seinfeld for the other head, or, you know, something something crazy, uh, where you could just have these heads, you know, now in my mind, I go back to, like, the, the uh, classic, um, the old classic uh, early talking films uh, and the comedy duos, you know, like Abbott and Costello or, uh, you know, you have, uh, who was the other ones? Uh, uh, Laurel and Hardy, uh, Abbott and Costello, uh, people like that. Uh, if you had uh, the ability to pull off voices like that, uh, you could do it. Or, you know, just... Uh, emulate the voices of two of your favorite actors uh, or two of your favorite superheroes uh, or whatever you could uh, you could uh, do that uh, for the um, for the two heads of the demogorgon all right uh, mechanical features what makes this particular monster uh, tick well it's cr8 and armor class 15, natural armor, uh, 123 hit points. Um, it's got the stat block from the Etten, so 
uh, high strength, um, low intelligence, uh, moderate wisdom, bad dexterity, um, low charisma, uh, and then um, it speaks both giant and orc, so it doesn't speak common. Um, and then the Etten, because it has two heads, it gains advantage on perception checks and on saving throws against being blinded, charmed, deafened, frightened, stunned, and knocked unconscious. And it's wakeful, so it's the monster itself is never fully asleep, because when one of the Etten's heads falls asleep, the other head is awake. Uh, so that, um, you cannot, uh, you basically cannot catch this thing uh, sleeping by non-magical means. Uh, you'd have to use some sort of a magical means to do that. Uh, now, it has some attacks, and then it has some special abilities. And you could argue that those special abilities are attacks as well, but I just chose to broke them up. Uh, the um, Demogorgon wields two weapons. It has a battle axe uh, that uses one-handed, and it has a morning star that uses the other hand. And a morning star I have pictured here. It's this, it's the mace that has all the spikes on the end of it. Um, so uh, it's plus eight to hit with either weapon. Uh, deals uh, 14 or 2d8 plus five damage, uh, depending on the weapon type. So slashing damage for the axe and piercing damage for the morning star. Now the special abilities. This is where you might uh, you might say that the special abilities could be considered attacks, because each head has a breath weapon. So the right head has a fire breath weapon. Uh, exhales fire in a 30-foot cone, DC 14 dexterity save, and 10d8 fire damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. Then the left head has cold breath. So it uh, exhales an icy blast and a 30-foot cone as well. Uh, and, you know, DC 14 constitution save or take um, 10 D8 cold damage on a failed or half as much on a successful save. And then it also has um, three different gaze attacks. Um, now it gets to choose uh, it gets to choose or the DM can just have it randomly um, determine which gaze effect uh, happens on a gaze attack. So gaze has a range of 120 feet, DC 14 wisdom save, and unless it's uh, incapacitated, it can invert its eyes to avoid the gaze and automatically succeed. Target does so, it can't see the Etten until the start of the Etten's next turn. The target looks at the Etten, in the meantime, it must immediately make the save. So, uh, suffers one of the following effects, beguiling gaze, so the target is stunned until the start of the Etten's next turn, or until the Etten is no longer within line of sight. A hypnotic gaze, uh, charmed by the Etten until the start of the Etten's next turn. And the Etten chooses how the charm target uses its actions, reactions, and movement. Uh, and of course, it's a um, it's like any other charm effect. So the limitations of charm, uh, you would just want to make sure you brush up on those. Like uh, you cannot ask a charmed creature to kill itself. And if you um, try to ask a charmed creature to do something that's really um, strongly against its alignment or strongly against its uh, ingrained um, habits. Uh, like, you know, somebody who's been adventuring with their companions a long time and has a strong sense of loyalty to them. Oh, go attack your friends. Go kill your friends. Uh, you probably are going to incur a saving throw uh, against uh, a command like that. And then an insanity gaze. Um, this is personally the one that I like the best. Uh, target suffers the effect of confusion spell without making a saving throw. Effect lacks, lasts until the start of the Etten's next turn. The Etten doesn't need to concentrate on the spell. So just 
just throw confusion on the target and then let the dice decide what happens by whatever the confusion effect happens to be. Uh, now, Thessalar uh, was uh, is the artificer who runs the laboratory that was once the Temple of Moloch. And the Temple of Moloch uh, originated in AD&D. And there's the classic cover of the... Um, I believe it's the DM's Guide from AD&D, where the um, adventurers are up on this big demonic-looking statue and trying to pry the um, the gem out of the eye socket of the statue. Well, that is the Temple of Moloch, where the Demogorgon lives. Uh, that's actually from that that specific place. Um uh, and Thessalar was known for creating many strange monsters and eventually becoming a lich through his pursuit of the alchemical arts. And the Demogorgon is, uh, as a specific creature with its own uh, stat block, a, is new in 5e in the Infernal Machine Rebuild Adventure, a source book that was published in 2019, and that grew out of an extra life adventure uh, based on a bunch of old content, as we said at the top of the show. All right, so how might you use the Demogorgon in a campaign? Well, uh, the Demogorgon itself is a very specific monster that comes from a really specific location. Uh, and because it's a named unique creature, it would be kind of hard to remove it from that location without sort of giving the game away to your, um, to your players. But this particular monster, and in fact, Thessalar and his entire, uh, you know, M.O., can provide inspiration for other two-headed creatures that are linked by lore to the actual uh, demon lord Demogorgon. So maybe you go into an area in a campaign that you're running where there's an unusual number of two-headed creatures, and maybe there's a strong cult of Demogorgon there in that area, and people attribute the two-headed creatures some of them might be, you know, like two-headed dogs or two-headed snakes or two-headed goats uh, or two-headed humanoids. Uh, they all might be tied by lore to Demogorgon um, for whatever reason. And then, you know, DM, he or she is free to make up whatever that reason might be. You know, maybe there was a time when the demon lord Demogorgon touched the world in this area, or um, the Demogorgon put a curse on this land or something like that uh, that caused the, this uh, spate of uh, this very unusual rate of uh, two-headed irregularities to happen in this region. Okay, and how could you reskin this monster? Well, probably the um, easiest thing you could do would be to make it a different type of giant and give it a different name. You know, put it somewhere else if you're going to do that. So, you know, um, you can imagine a uh, two-headed storm giant with um, breath weapons. So, you know, imagine like uh, one that has a lightning breath and one that has some sort of thunder effect um, that uh, as a breath weapon from the other uh, from the other head. Uh, or maybe there's a um, a fire giant uh, or a stone giant, you know, and uh, like a stone giant, it might have fire breath and acid breath. Uh, you know, you could you could think of a bunch of different things that uh, you could do with uh, different types of giants, and then of course you're going to scale that down. You could you could make it, you know, two headed, you know, a two headed goat that has lightning breath, uh, or you know, lightning and fire breath, or something like that, uh, which would just be 
uh, would just be kind of uh, interesting. Uh, so there's lots of different things you could do uh, by taking this block for uh, the Demogorgon and uh, using it as an inspiration for creating something entirely new for your own campaign. All right. Um, I don't see any questions on the chat. I'm going to go ahead into the wrap up. I'll double check the chat uh, in a few moments, see if there's any questions before we uh, end for the night. Um, the I have been your host, uh, DM Galabond. Uh, there's a few other shows that I do every week. Uh, Thursday night at 8 p.m. Oops, okay. I had to go back to the old template and I forgot to update uh, the times and the information. So Sunday afternoon, the game Walker of Waterdeep has changed to 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we're now starting a half hour earlier and we're ending at 6 p.m. Eastern so that we can roll right into... Um, another show that some friends of mine are doing uh, and, and called um, There Will Be Dungeons. And then uh, there's the Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. Uh, that is actually a, an adventure that we did from January through May. You can find that full archive of that show over on my YouTube channel. Uh, all 20 sessions of it are there. What we're doing now is we are doing something called the Sword Coast Chronicles, where we are playing through portions of uh, basically taking a survey of the published campaigns for 5th edition that are all set in the Sword Coast uh, in uh, the Sword Coast. Uh, so that is a uh, that's kind of a fun uh, campaign. It's got most of the same players that were in Ice Spire Peak. A couple of new players have joined that, and uh, we're uh, we're having a good time going through uh, that. Now, there was no uh, there was no show last Thursday night because uh, my team was busy advancing to the. Uh, finals of the MLS's back tournament. Uh, they will be playing against Portland tomorrow night uh, in order to try to win the cup. So uh, let's go, City. Uh, hopefully we will win uh, that cup. But after that, I don't anticipate any uh, more disruptions to the Thursday night or uh, Sunday schedule for a while, at least until they decide uh, what they're going to do uh, about having any kind of regular sports season for either college football or for um, or for the MLS uh, beyond this tournament. All right, you can find uh, all of my live streams over on Twitch. You can find all the daily D&D &D content that I drop over on YouTube. Uh, and you, if you wish... You can support what we're doing on the Twitch and on the YouTube over at the Patreon that I have. Uh, all right. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Hopefully, we will see you back here next week uh, for another look at a monster out of the uh, history of D&D uh, and the various different editions. Uh, we are taking a little bit of a break from the uh, monsters out of Magic the Gathering because I have finished going through all the monsters I did for Ravnica, and we are in the plane of Innistrad, and that is the next group of monsters that I will be doing. I don't want to start going through those monsters from Innistrad until my party has actually left that plane, uh, and because uh, I don't want to inadvertently do one and then have them go, oh, well, okay, now we know what we're fighting. Uh, <laughs> When we, when we go up against this thing. Uh, I want to keep that a little bit of a surprise for them. All right. Well, thank you very much. Take care. Have a wonderful week. And as always, watch out for the monsters under the bed. Good night, everybody. <laughs>